So after my previous video, a handful of people were upset that I covered the retail version of this pile of trash and not the Mesa build, which is, you know, actually good. Thing is, unfortunately, these handful of people didn't go to school, so they weren't able to read the pinned comment. And you know what? Screw it. I'm gonna make this video, and maybe one more, partially related to Hunt Down the Freeman, and that's it. I'm sick of it, honestly. I'm very sure a lot of you are as well. So yeah, here's the Mesa build. In this video, we're gonna be talking about the Mesa build of Hunt Down the Freeman. It is named after one of the original developers who worked on this game, and there is a whole new team of modders and mappers who are working to at least make this game somewhat enjoyable. Mesa, or Black Mesa with a 3, is leading this project along with Operation Whiskey Freedom dev team. This team consists of many original and new developers. Let me be clear about two things. First, this build is currently in development, and has been for quite a while and it is far from finished. I do not know when it will be finished, but I'm goddamn sure it will be one of the biggest achievements humankind has ever accomplished. Secondly, I did not play each and every single level of this build, particularly the ones at the ends because there wasn't much changed yet. And come on, I am not going through the whole game twice. So I played the first half of the game and the last mission to see what they changed, but I am very confident that the worth noting changes will be shown in this video. There's also a link in the description which is a list of changes made, plus the project's Trello board in case I missed something in this video. And looking at that Trello board, I realized that Mesa and the team are definitely hard at work trying to fix this. Check those two things out if you're interested. Now let's get to the game. Starting off, I was impressed that the level select screen actually had the levels in it, with new images. Previously it just showed the first level of each act along with the training and the prologue, regardless if you finished the game or not. Right after that, each level or chapter now has a proper loading screen. These quality of life changes might feel minor, but they definitely help out polishing up the game. The next immediate thing I noticed was that now there's actual subtitles, and not just for the training level, for the whole game. Very impressive. And also the soldiers actually have pupils now. We're off to a great start, and I don't mean that in an ironic way. The training level as a whole has some of its parts different. It actually has a proper parkour section, plus later on we'll see that the parkour is actually used multiple times in the game now, which is very nice. The weapons also got an update in terms of their animations, minor changes to the models and sounds. After the training level we see the intro cutscene and here's the thing. While the team can definitely improve upon the gameplay part of the game, there is just no way they can redo all of these cutscenes and overhaul the story to make it better. I don't know if they do plan to change the story, but given how much effort and time it will take, I suggest that they just don't. The Black Mesa part looks familiar, even with the step back to pick up the knife moment, but they did change up how it plays out. In the section where you would just walk through the door, it now requires you to do some parkour and hit four switches to open it up, which finally gives the parkour system an actual use. Also I don't know if this line was here before, but now your buddies actually tell you that Gordon Freeman is in the area. Mitchell, where the hell are you? Freeman is here. Which kind of makes sense of how Mitchell knows Gordon and why he wants his revenge throughout the game. That's the little type of patching up that makes some sense for the game. The rest is pretty much the same. The hospital now doesn't require you to chase some random dude to get a health kit. Both the health kits and the weapons are at the start. You even get to see G-Man like this throughout the rest of the game too, which is a nice touch. Originally, the hospital didn't have that much problems apart from this nonsense, but I like what they did here. This starting area is leagues above what the original was like. There's a crashed helicopter, zombies to fight and best of all, an actual good map design. We get into a lift and it crashes so we lose all our weapons. The rest of the map is pretty much the same as the original. 
that did block off the area where you had to prone under a table. Instead, you now prone through a vent. After the cutscene where you meet Nick, there's a new cutscene which shows what the world is like, conveys a tiny bit of world building, shows what's going on outside rather than just plopping you at the start, and that deviation where you had to get a knife to open a gate is gone. Again, it's the minor changes that make all the difference. They removed the trenches here and most of the battle feels the same. I did however find some sort of easter egg where I got teleported into the back rooms. And this, this is the best update they made. I love it. The rest was pretty much the same though, but I noticed that now you can see Adam's laser sight. That's cool. The hotel lobby is pretty much the same as before, but I think they reduced the spawn rate of the enemies. It's not as chaotic as before. Also the elevator got an overhaul and now the textures don't look out of place. And again a little improvement. A nice touch that you now have to press N to put on the night vision goggles. No more selecting it and pressing the mouse button to equip it. Also there's an axe now which I think exists in the original game's files but no map gives you the option to pick one up. After that is the cutscene, the chase through the canals, this arena and the rest of it is pretty much the same. I guess they might change this in the future, I'm not sure. The next thing I noticed was that those spooky people in the darkness that weren't moving now actually come out to fight. So now this is where I was seriously happy. Remember that whole parking lot area with the elite synths and man hacks? It's been completely revamped. It's actually fun to play now. You can't skip it. You have to fight through the enemies and that's awesome. Visually everything's been overhauled and it all looks great. And to give a little bit of more excitement to this boring ass place, you now have to use the night goggles to progress further. A tiny detail I noticed was that now it shows that the door is electronically operated. So now it makes just a tad bit more sense to put these wires in and see that electronic door unlock. Now this godforsaken place also became a little more easier. The claymores around the wires have been reduced and see that red splash? That's an indication for the player to use the parkour. It took me a minute but I love this subtle hint about what to do. This indication appears throughout the game where the game gives you a hint rather than outright saying Hey, use the parkour thing. Another example of these subtle hints is this, a simple white light. It's not out of place to be looking weird, but it's just out of place enough to tell the player, Hey, this is where you're supposed to go. It leads us to a room where we can disable the claymores and move on. I admit, it's not the best ever game design ever made, but it's much, much better than trial and error like in the original game. Then we meet up with the best character in the game, Colonel Q. At this point, the game had you open this valve and the one on the other end, but now it's just one valve and it opens up real quick. And look at that, it also has proper level transitions now. So in this train platform area is where I got stuck because I couldn't figure out what to do. Before you had to wait a little and get in the train but now I walked all over the place but couldn't find the solution. I might be blind but let's disregard that. Anyway, I skipped this area. Now the thing is, I don't know if they removed the train level. You know, with the barren flat land and the minigun? I'm pretty certain they did because I couldn't find it in the map list or the level select screen. After the train platforms, it goes straight to the cutscene where the train stops at the rangers camp and plays the Humvee level. And to be honest, not much of value was lost by removing the train level. It has literally no challenge and nothing to look at. It was just extra padding. I didn't notice any changes with the Humvee level though. It was pretty much the same. The level after this though, it got a total overhaul. Rather than the two little shacks and two buildings, it's now a proper industrial complex. It's more dense looking and visually looks much better. There's a new cutscene here that shows you that you have to activate the power to progress further. Thankfully, the switches aren't that far from the gates. They even show you one in the cutscene. After that, we get a radio comm from Joe. Oh shit. 
so we get a radio com from Joe about asking for help so we gotta go help him out. Instead of just walking into a building, we now have to actually use parkour to progress. And remember those red splashes? Look at that. A subtle hint. It's not out of place, but you know what it means. We climb and jump over a lot of things and make our way into the factory. This is how you use a gameplay mechanic, designing levels and scenarios around it, making the player use it in a way that makes sense. The inside of the factory part is the same, but once we're done with all of this, it's straight to the port level. No more padding, no more fights with a billion enemies. The first port level is the same, but after that they really shortened the second level. Shortened it enough to convey a sense of progress and remove all that random walking around trying to figure out where the hell you're supposed to go. You swim across, get in the Humvee, drive for like one minute and reach the ship. Perfect. Next up, the crazy captain cutscene. Remember this useless level where you had to defend against exploding manhacks and wardigons? Well now, they actually put some sense into it. You now have to get on this lift, go down, and turn on the power. Like now it makes sense for this level to exist. Big Mitch is trying to turn on the power so the ship can move. Along the way you fight enemies and thankfully it's not just Vortigons or Manhacks, but Synths too. Then you go back up through the interior areas and get outside for the level to end. Such a simple change, yet it adds so much to this level. A purpose, a little bit of fun. Then there's the cutscene with Mitch explaining context again a black wall and three years pass by. Act 2. My god I love Act 2 in this build. Mesa you goddamn madman, you turned a boring ass, desolate level into something that's fun. The starting cave is the same, this time it actually has antlions in it along with plenty of flare pickups. By the way, thanks for telling me about the flares in the comments of the previous video cause I had no idea I was supposed to use them. Anyway, the snow levels. It still has walking, yes, but now there's less walking. Yay! Also, there's combine soldiers to deal with instead of antlions and the best part? The sniper actually has a purpose. The level now has combine installments and bases in it and it's so much fun picking them off from a distance. Proning down in the snow and looking into the scope of the sniper feels much more badass now. Instead of aimlessly walking around, now you get to do something and this is the best way this map could have been improved compared to the original. This firefight actually got hairy and I loved the challenge. There's a bunch of combine soldiers with a bunch of hunters in a wide open space, it's great to play through. Ahead we face off against more hunters, and like I said in the previous video, the game does give us an open space to fight them, but I think it would be much, much better if Big Mitch is able to sprint sideways. It'll give players a way to evade the hunter's charging attack, or even the flechettes, or flechettes, or whatever the hell they're called. Moving on, we come across the part where the game crashed whenever you tried to get on these pipes. Well now, there's no more pipes. It's a lift and honestly instead of a long and slow climb, this is much more better paced in this specific area. We face heavy resistance atop this structure and again this is much better than having no enemies at all. Previously you just had to get up here, turn on the power to open that huge gate, but now this leads you straight into the combine underground base, removing all those useless sniper areas. Absolutely based. The base is the same as before, but previously it led us to that horrendous area with the one-shot orbital blast section or whatever, but now it's just a simple walk while you fight the Combine. I love it. However, I do wish they fixed this area, make it more visually streamlined. Just adding one or two light sources to the right side of the building would immensely improve it. I'm just asking to give it a subtle hint about where to go. So we meet Boris, kill everyone, and the map ends. Nothing too different here. Even in my earlier video I said I liked this area. It's a pretty enjoyable gunfight. You kill all the combined soldiers and the level ends. However, there's a new cutscene now. It shows the dead combine, the children looking at Big Mitch and him reaching out to help them escape. And finally, it actually shows you that 17 years have passed by.
Wow. Before, there was no mention of this passage of time until Nick mentions it later on in another cutscene. So the ship section starts off from a room, but the rest of it is pretty much the same. No significant update here. They still left in this jumping on the train section, but now it shows Adams there saying he'll hold off the combine while we go ahead. Okay, I guess it's not too bad. And hey, they added in Dr. Breen, by the way in the city 17 level. Rest of it is pretty much the same up till the point the metro cops capture us. Now it actually shows the cops blocking you. It doesn't let you jump over them or anything. I might sound like a broken record, but it's the little things, folks. After this, I didn't notice any big or significant change. So let's just skip to the Nova Prospect level. Previously, this was all a big ass walking simulator level, but now it's cut by 90%, which saves a lot of time and actually gets to the point about Freeman escaping through the teleporter. You fall into a sewer and probably get washed out to sea where the rebels capture us. Of course, it's still not shown, but maybe that's an update for the future. Also, it skipped right ahead to the prison level without showing the Sasha cutscene. We'll take another big jump here cause again, I didn't notice any significant updates to the levels up till the final one. Now, previously we had to defend ourselves for 15 minutes and using the turrets, it wasn't that difficult honestly. But now it's a full blown level to go through. We have to get to the top of this huge ass combine base and wait for Nick to save us. Best part is this level actually slaps like for real. Forgive me for saying this, but it kind of gives me flashbacks to the final level of Half-Life 2 where you fight through a horde of Combine soldiers in the Citadel. This level has you fighting the Combine, plus it uses the parkour system. It was fun, and that's what matters. It even had a very simple puzzle which was really good to include. At the end, we're on top of the rooftop and now instead of 15, we just have to wait 4 minutes, which is really nice. This section is kind of similar to the original version's defending section at the end but now it's a little more challenging cause the combine can actually topple over the turrets with a grenade and bum rush you. While this footage plays, I'll give my short closing remarks. Setting out to fix a game like Hunt Down the Freeman is a colossal task. So major props to all the developers working on this. Like I said earlier, they can't really fix the story unless they hire voice actors and animators and redo every single cutscene to include a new and better story. That said, they can however fix the levels, the way the game is designed and is played out. Mesa and the team have been at it for a long time. They're doing a lot of work as we speak and I think it'll be a long, long time before someone can come up to the stage and say, Hunt on the Freeman has finally been fixed. Hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you in the next one.